This is probably the last time you're going to see these fish in this aquarium. Like humans, unfortunately, sometimes. In that video, they weren't getting along. All these guys are sold. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're going to be doing my March 2022 fish room update tour. So let's get into this week's video. So I know I show this tank a lot on my videos, but it's an awesome tank, I think. <laughs> um, it's got my breeding pair of Neal Emperor Logos Lay Loopy in it. Uh, commonly referred to as the lemon cichlid. And uh, this is the first breeding pair of Leilupi that I had from the fall that I purchased over a year ago. And the reason why I'm showing you guys this tank is because they've spawned and they've got some fry. The fry are approximately, uh, been free swimming for approximately one week now and they're doing really well. It's not a massive spawn, I don't think. Uh, I've only seen some of the fry so far. Uh, but I have been surprised in the past with some, the sizes of some of their spawns where I don't realize how many fry there are in the tank until they fully become free swimming in the water column uh, after about another week or so. Uh, what I'm going to do in this video is pop some live microworms in the tank right now and hopefully that will show you guys how many fry are in this aquarium as well as me. So um, hopefully that will show me the size of this spawn. So I'm just getting some micro worms out of one of my cultures. Stinky things. If you don't know what micro worms are, look them up. <laughs> the, 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 the culture smells like off milk, just to give you guys an idea. So I'm gonna turn the flow off to this aquarium now. And I'm turning the flow off because I don't want the microworms to go over the bulkhead and into my sump. So it will also give the fry enough time to find the microworms in the water column and uh, eat them, get a good feed. So now you can see some of the fry are uh, heading into the water column. I'm standing pretty far back from the tank because they're still not uh, very used to me yet. They'll eventually the fry will eventually, over the course of about a month or two, associate seeing me in the fish room with food uh, and then they will come up to the front of the tank. They uh, quickly learn that <laughs> when they see me in the fish room that they're possibly going to get fed. So you can see the male, uh, Leilupi, in the middle of the tank there and the female at the bottom uh, right, guarding their fry. This pair has been fantastic for me. I mean, if you saw in my uh, full fish room tour for 2022, if you haven't seen that video, you can watch it here. Uh, but in that video, this pair were, were, weren't getting along, they were fighting. And um, like I said in that video, they go through stages in their relationship. And um, like, like humans, unfortunately, sometimes. And uh, in that video, they weren't getting along. Now they're, they've obviously made up and uh, they're getting along and have spawned. So. I think I just had the fry, their, their, their last uh, spawn in the tank a little bit too long with them, but I had to do that because I had no more room in the fish room. But now as you can see, they got fry with them. They actually had spawned uh, and I took fry, the older fry out of the tank with this uh, new spawn still in the tank. Uh, when this spawn was still eggs, I had to uh, catch all the fry and uh, not move that rock with the eggs out of the tank. It was uh, quite a lengthy, uh, exercise to have to do but I did it and it obviously paid off because now I am rewarded with a nice school of Leilupi fry in this aquarium. This aquarium is two foot wide by two foot long by about 16 inches high so it's got a nice wide footprint for my Tanganyika and cichlids. Tanganyika and cichlids were well, the ones I keep uh, generally are the substrate spawners. They don't need a tall tank, a deep tank, they much rather have a wide uh, long tank. So a lot of them, you know, they hide in caves, under rocks. They don't, won't come into the, into the water column uh, all that much sometimes. And they prefer to have a lot of rock piles, uh, like the Leilupi, for example, have a lot of rock piles to hide in and have that shelter and then spawn as well. So you don't necessarily need a very deep tank to keep these uh, substrate spawners. There are Tanganyika cichlids that do prefer open water, such as my Ventralis chaitika, uh, le uh, Leptosoma, they prefer large open water, large spaces in their aquariums to uh, swim around. But these guys don't. So you can see the fry in the water column now picking off the microworms, and that's their first feed of the day. 
Later on in the day, I will give them a baby brine shrimp and that will be their second feeding of the day. So when the fry are this size, I feed them twice a day, purely because they don't have the body fat, the fat reserves yet to uh, rely on that sustenance uh, until they're much older. With say the adults, for instance, I could probably go a day because they've got fat reserves, they've got body fat, they've got their, their very healthy fish. They could last a day or two without food, uh, probably a little bit longer, but I really wouldn't recommend you do that. Uh, but with fry, you want to feed them multiple times a day because again, they don't have the fat reserves to rely on uh, to sustain their uh, growth and their energy levels. These fry are growing at a, at a very fast rate when they're this young and they do so for the first six months and then their growth rates kind of slow down after that to about the one year mark. Anyway, there you go guys, my breeding pair of Neolamp Prologus Lupi. Now I showed this aquarium last month in my last fish room update tour, but I wanted to show you it again because I made some progress in this aquarium with the Altolamp Prologus compressorceps, my gold comps. These are the gold compressorceps, not the gold headed compressorceps. Their whole body uh, is a yellow coloration. So the reason why I'm showing you this tank is of course because of them. And I just wanted to again show you the progress that I've had with using dither fish in this aquarium. So you can see there are a lot of open swimming fish in this tank. Like I mentioned in my Neolamprologus Lelupi Aquarium, Ventralis tritica, that is what those silvery looking fish are with the bluish tinge. Uh, they like to swim in the open water. So putting them in this aquarium, using them as dither fish, really brought my Altolamprologus compressorceps out of the rock work. They were extremely shy. They would stay at the back of the tank and hide. And I was only ever seeing two of the three fish. Now I see all three fish frequently. Uh, it used to be, honestly guys, a rare occurrence where I would see the largest uh, fish as you can see is right at the back there. Uh, that's the largest compressor steps I've got. Uh, and it would always hide underneath that rock. But now it's always in the open. I'm able to see it. Yes, it is at the back of the tank still but it does come forward, it does swim away from that cave because it's seeing other fish in the aquarium. That is the role these Ventralis Chitika played. They were dither fish, that's their sole purpose of being in the aquarium. Make the compressor steps feel like there are no predators about. The compressor steps see other fish swimming around, that would make them feel at ease. They'll believe that there's no predators about because there are fish swimming around. Those fish look relaxed, so in turn it makes the compressor steps feel relaxed and at ease and they're more inclined to swim out in the open water. If there's no fish around, and the compressor steps are the only fish in the aquarium, they're gonna feel a little uh, skittish and uh, nervous, and they won't want to come out in the open water as much. So guys, if you have shy fish, not necessarily uh, Altolamprologus compressor steps, but shy fish, any type of fish that you feel is being shy and uh, not coming out in the open, introduce other fish with them, and that might bring them out in the open. Use some sort of fish as dither fish and it will really help bring out your shy uh, skittish fish. So uh, this has really worked. It's taken about three to four months now to get them to this point. So, you know, the, comp the gold compressor steps are still staying at the back of the tank uh, and it's taken that long to, to get them to come out in the open. Honestly, I would never see that largest compressor steps out in the open for this length of time. Uh, if anything, it would just poke its snout out of the cave and uh, that's all I would ever see of it. Uh, and I'd see glimpses of it while it's eating. The other thing with these guys, I feed the gold compressor steps at the back of the aquarium because they just stay at the back of the tank so much. I probably really should try to bring them to the front of the aquarium uh, so they get used to eating at the front of the tank and that would probably train them a little bit better to come out in the open even more. But I haven't done that yet. I'm pretty lucky to get this far. All that said though, uh, I'm probably going to be undoing all this good work this week because I'm actually selling the Ventralis Chitika. All these fish are going. I have some others that will replace them uh, in this aquarium that will play the role of dither fish that need to go out of a tank that they're currently in that aren't currently for sale, but all these guys are sold. So I'm pretty happy about that, obviously, but uh, I really hope I don't undo all that good work just purely by catching out the Ventralis Chitika this week. But there you go guys, just wanted to show you the progress that I've had with my gold Altolamprologus compressor steps uh, and using the Ventralis Chitika as did the fish. And guys, the next tank I want to show you is this one. <laughs> if 
you've been subscribed to my channel for the last two weeks, you would have seen that I recently uh, filled this aquarium with my fry. Basically, all the fish you see here, I have uh, spawned in this fish room. The yellow fish are Neolamprologus leilupi. They are the fry from the breeding pair I just showed you. And these guys are just over a year old. The black and white striped fish that you see in here are a different species of Tanganyikan cichlid. They are called Julidochromus regani. Uh, they are also known as the convict Julie, not the convict cichlid. Uh, don't get them confused with that. The convict cichlids from South America. These guys are all from Lake Tanganyika in Africa. So this aquarium, I recently set it up. It's a five foot long aquarium by 45 centimeters wide by 40 centimeters tall. I'm using this tank as a grow out aquarium for my fry. I want to grow them up to la as larger fish and then sell them off. And I'm showing you guys this aquarium purely because this is probably the last time you're going to see these fish in this aquarium. And that's because all these fish are sold as well. Like I said in that video two weeks ago, I had just I held off from selling these guys because I wanted to put them in the aquarium just so I could see what this tank would look like stocked full of my uh, Leilupi fry and my uh, Regani fry. And I think you can agree it looks pretty awesome. Uh, in that video, I also said I always sit in front of this tank and just watch it. It's just a very relaxing tank to watch. I love seeing these fish swim around and interact with each other. It is quite mesmerizing and relaxing to watch. So unfortunately, these guys will be uh, sold at the end of the week as well. However, the good news is I have more Leilupi fry coming through that I will stock in this aquarium as soon as these fry are sold. So that will be at the end of this week. But by the time you see this video, these fish would have been sold off. So I'm really glad I held off from selling them because this tank has become my favorite tank in the fish room. But all is not lost because I will be able to stock this tank back up with my next generation of Leilupi fry and they'll be able to grow up in this large aquarium rather than just a two foot by one foot tank. But yeah guys, I just wanted to show you this tank one more time before I sell them off. So there you have it guys, a March 2022 fish room update tour. Really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment and consider subscribing to my channel. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.